Tripod headstand tends to be a preferred variation of headstand for people who are stronger and a little bit tighter in the shoulders. So this one, hands are forward. Hannah's gonna go ahead, tuck her chin to her chest. Okay, and then the crown of the head comes down. All right, so again, crown of the head, we don't want the forehead down. And then the palms come down underneath where the elbows are as the elbows hug toward the midline. From this position, she's going to press the palms down and lift the tops of her shoulders up. The toes tuck, the knees lift. And then often, as soon as the feet walk in, the upper back will round. So you want to exactly make sure those shoulder heads stay lifting. And then let's get profile. So, same work. Top of the head comes down. All right. And then she takes her hands. And this is another one. Often, as many times as I'll say, have your hands by uh, the elbows underneath them. Students love to set up the posture in a line. Just more comfortable that way, but a triangle, architecturally, more sound than a line. All right, from here, she'll tuck the toes under and lift up. And then we'll take one knee to one tricep. Good, one knee to the other. Very nice. For students who have difficulty with this, an assist will be, go ahead, take the toes now. One knee to one tricep. They may fumble to give them a sense of they're doing the work, but just a little support. I can just put my hand underneath her foot and then go ahead, the other foot to the other tricep, and I can support there. All right, we're making sure the shoulder heads stay lifted. And then if you have a student that does still, even when they're thinking about it, tend to round here, you can have your knees kind of supporting their back, moving toward the front body and I'll place my hands by her feet, and then I'll say, go ahead, move your butt back, feet up. Butt back, feet up, butt back, feet up, butt back, feet up, butt back, feet up. Some students you'll have to work a lot harder for than she's making me work, but you get the idea. All right, and then she'll come on down. All right. For students who are quite comfortable with that eggshell shape, then we can practice pressing up without the aid of an assistant. So Hannah will set herself up one more time. And you notice how she's taking that child's pose in between. That's a nice way to release the neck after the headstand. Mr. Iyengar says that you'll go mad if you don't do it. There are enough crazy people out there. All right, so from here, she hollows the belly and then she starts to move the hips back as she lifts the shoulders up and then maybe getting lighter on one toe, then the other, whoop, and making her way up. Yes, and for the most part, we have the head, the shoulders, the hips, and the toes all in line. And then come on down, take a child's pose. All right, if you'd like more information about how the feet and the hips are to be in the headstand, then refer back to the Shirsasana A video. We've gone through all of that there. Um, I'm not gonna make Hannah stand on her head for 20 minutes today. <laughs> all right, so go ahead, have some fun. And uh, yeah, to the yoga.